Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we are going to be proving all the major forms of the beta function and just kind of transforming them into one another to prove that they're all equal to this uh, very cool function which is really uh, useful for evaluating integrals. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So first let's write out all the different forms that this is going to equal, be equal to. So the main form of the beta function is beta of m and n equals gamma of m times gamma of n all over gamma of m plus n. And some other forms that are very useful is that this is equal also to the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n, 1 minus t to the m. I'm sorry, uh, all of, both of those are minus 1 dt. It's also equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, u to the m minus 1 over 1 plus u to the m plus n du. And it's also equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the 2m minus 1 theta cosine to the 2n minus 1 theta d theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one and then we're going to transform it into this one and this one. And so we're going to be able to show all these uh, really useful results which are always come in handy uh, when evaluating integrals. Personally I use uh, this one the most when I'm evaluating integrals but sometimes this one also comes in handy. So let's go ahead and prove that first one. So the way we're going to do this is the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n minus 1, 1 minus t to the m minus 1 dt can actually be represented as a convolution. So this is f convoluted with g of 1, where f of t is uh, t to the n minus 1 and g of t is t to the m minus 1. And so a convolution is defined by f convoluted with g of t is the integral from 0 to t of f of v g of t minus v dv. And so this is a little bit confusing. I'll just change this to v right here because this is going to make more sense. Um, And so it's essentially just um, multiplying the two functions together, scaling one of them back across the order of integration and integrating from zero to t. And so the great thing about a convolution is that the Laplace transform of a convolution of functions is the same as the product of the Laplace transforms. And that's relatively easy to prove by just exchanging the orders of integration, integrating with respect to one variable and then switching back and integrating with respect to the other variable. So let's go ahead and apply that right here. So assuming f convoluted with g as a function of t, we're going to take the Laplace transform of this. And this equals the Laplace transform of f of t times the Laplace transform of g of t. All right, now the Laplace transform of f of t is pretty simple. Um, it's just going to be n minus 1 factorial, but in order to generalize this, uh, instead of writing it with factorial, we'll write it using the gamma uh, representation because that's going to be a lot easier for us. So that's going to be gamma of n over s to the n times gamma of m over s to the m. So we're going to end up with gamma n, gamma m over s to the n plus m. Then we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform everywhere, right? And we're going to end up with our original function back, <laughs> which was f convoluted with g of t equals gamma of n, gamma of m. And then what we're going to do here is multiply by gamma of n plus n and then divide by gamma of n plus n, right? And so this, the 
the inverse Laplace transform of this is just uh, t to the m plus n minus 1. And then the rest of this is just constant, so it just stays right here. We have t to the m plus n minus 1. You can go ahead and verify that if we were to take the Laplace transform of this, that uh, we would end up with m plus n minus 1 factorial, which is the same as gamma m plus n, and we would end up with essentially the same thing again. And so when we evaluate it at 1, because as you can see, our integral was actually evaluated at 1, this whole bit is going to disappear because 1 to anything is just 1. So we ended up proving that this is in fact correct. So this is one of the forms of our beta function. Now let's see how we can convert it into another form of the, the beta function. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to now convert it into the form that was uh, the one with sine and cosine. So we're going to set t equal to sine squared of theta. And that means that dt equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. I'm sorry, I keep on forgetting this. It should be minus 1 right here, minus 1 uh, d theta, right? When t is 0, theta is also 0. But when t is 1, that means theta is pi over 2. So we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, okay, so for this t to the n minus 1, we're going to end up with sine of theta to the 2n minus 2. Similarly, 1 minus sine squared of theta is cosine squared of theta, so we're going to end up with cosine to the 2m minus 2 theta, or I'll, I'll rewrite that as a power because it's a little bit ambiguous. So we'll have cosine theta to the 2m minus 2. And now we'll go ahead and add our d theta. So we're, we'll put a 2 in front here, then we're going to multiply once by sine theta and once by cosine theta. And so that's going to end up turning this negative 2 into just a negative 1, and this negative 2 into just a negative 1. And that's it. Then we have d theta. And as you can see, this is another form of the beta function. Now we're going to go ahead and use this form in order to get a even better form for the beta function. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reorganize this into uh, a little bit of an easier form. So we're going to get 2 integral from 0 to pi over 2. And then instead of sine of theta to the 2n minus 1, we're going to do tangent theta to the 2n minus 1. And so by doing that, we're kind of dividing by cosine theta to the 2n minus 1. So we need to multiply back by 2 cosine theta to the 2n minus 1. So we're going to end up with cosine theta to the 2m plus 2n minus 2. And instead of minus 2, we're just going to bring that out as secant squared of theta, and then d theta. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to substitute u equals tangent theta. That means that du is secant squared theta d theta, and that's just this. Now, when uh, theta equals 0, u is going to be 0, and when theta equals pi over 2, u is going to go to infinity. So we're going to end up right here with 2, again, integral from 0 to infinity of u to the 2n minus 1. And then for cosine theta to the 2m plus 2n, we're going to sort of reorganize this here. First, let's write it as cosine squared of theta to the m plus n. And then we'll notice that u squared plus 1 is secant squared theta, right? So that means that 1 over u squared plus 1 is equal to cosine squared of theta. So we can go ahead and uh, put this all into our integral, and we're going to end up with over 1 plus u squared to the m plus n du. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make some more space. 
Now in order to convert this into our last major uh, form of the gamma function, or the beta function, I'm sorry, uh, we need to get this u squared to just be a u. So we're going to substitute u squared equals v, or v to the, oh sorry, that's u, v to the one half equals u. That means that one half v to the negative one half dv equals du. So when we go ahead and substitute that in, the one half is going to cancel with the two, so we'll just end up with the integral from zero to infinity. Now instead of u to the two n minus one, we're going to end up with v to the uh, n minus one half, and then we're going to end up with minus one half again, so minus one half again, and that's just going to end up being n minus one, right? That's just coming from the uh, dv from this right here. And on the bottom, we're just going to have 1 plus v to the m plus n. And as you can see, this is another form of the beta function. Now, usually it's, uh, it's represented with an m on the top instead of an m. But you can see by switching uh, m and n in the definition for the beta function, that it's really the same no matter which letter you put first. So that's just a pretty quick overview of uh, some pretty easy ways to convert all three of these uh, different formulas for the beta function into one another. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.